good morning. Welcome to Sykeside campsite in the Lake District. And today I'm heading up there on Chris Ensoll's winter scrambling course. Should be fabulous. Had a good night in the tent. It's nicely, nicely crusted with ice. So better get some breakfast and get up there. Kirkston Pass, but we're solid ice everywhere. If I hadn't had these on, I don't think I would have made it. You sack on like that, and then just put it in. Obviously, it goes above when you've got that on. You just hold it like you normally hold it, and do that. That so you do stand like that more. That'd be great. Yeah. So, so Dave's got pretty outy feet, yeah. yeah? And and he came down there, so he used dynamic balance, which is what he did as well, which is great. If you're gonna do something wrong, don't try and combine wrong things. You know, if you're gonna use bad technique, use a good bit as well. So like he ran it out, didn't he, when he slipped, yeah. instead of trying to stop him, he just kept going, which yeah. was good. So he, he recovered his balance, but, um, and, and that's what Dave did there, but um, but because Dave's feet are on quite a long way out, didn't get very much penetration. In there. <laughs> so go on up. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, good. It's always easier when you don't have to think about. Yes, else, it is. It? it is much better. There you go. Off you go. Just coming back down again. Yeah. Forgotten. Well, let's try and use your heels. <laughs> okay, great. So that was a good demonstration of being dynamic. Okay, so see so your hips here. Yeah kind of up the slope so let's bring them round okay. and can you feel your toes then naturally also come round yeah can you see that right and now give me a hand there so resist this pull ready? you ready that is really strong isn't it yeah okay if i turn you around and got you to stay on your toes and That'd did that fine. you'd you'd be off yeah okay, okay so and try and try and keep like that as you go up there we go good go on so down to go up yeah. drive off that there we go and now cross over that's it cool like that. yeah good good he's doing as he typically does is moving over the ground and really thinking it's grippy and it does actually work so if you've got low confidence and putting yourself on something like that if you think it grippy it works it does and we're progressing onto steeper and steeper ground so that's a wedge, you know, this is a big ledge, isn't it? Um, or, you know, smaller ledges. And, and sometimes we'll wedge them between boulders, won't we? You know, so, so ledges, edges and wedges. So, so, so that's much the same when you're going over boulders. Um, then that's, that's great. You know, so the more we can stand up straight strong, and what I'm doing there is saying, and I didn't even say it out loud, grippy feet, grippy feet, grippy feet. You know, I'm going, because otherwise I won't treat them as they're grippy and I will slip off them. Yeah. So what am I doing? You know, it's all about this strong stance, yeah. you know. So so the strong stance is, you know, so when we come to the next bit, when we start using the ropes and stuff, this all translates. So that's why I want this to be at least firm so that you get you get it so that when we move on to using the ropes you you get it yeah you know uh, and similarly when we're using crampons as well you know so so that's why if you're thinking well why are we still piddling around in the snow it's because because we haven't learned to walk yet <laughs> we're still getting that bit, yeah. okay cool okay let's Fran, let's your carry walking on up is entirely here, wrong <laughs> your whole life <laughs> my whole life i've got 42 years of walking to do well yeah and, I, and and but what's interesting is quite often the people that i get that most appreciate the new way of walking are in their 50s or you know so so maybe on an ml i'll have people and you read their logbook and they've done all the they've done, done all the munros and they've been walking since they were 12 you know and they're in their 50s and, and they say to me what's the best thing you learn i say to them at the end of the course that's one of the questions on yeah. the question and 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 it's and, and they say i learned to walk <laughs> you know like and they've been to the alps they've done, you know done loads and loads of stuff and they're like 
but they because they picked up some bad habits and it's their it's bodies it's were hurting it's where you've never been taught good habits no exactly yeah rather it's an, than yeah it's an know. assumed competence isn't yeah, it but, it is. but even with you guys you know they're walking well anyway you, you you learning to walk a lot better aren't you you know so mm. and and also when it goes wrong now hopefully you'll be able to go ah I know I'm doing that wrong now. And I'll, I can fix it. Next step, I'm going to stand up a bit more, or I'm going to push a bit more through my heel, or, or whatever it is that you do wrong. Okay, okay. You got to just do it so you can see, like that. And then I dig that out, yeah, and make myself a nice big ledge to stand on, yeah. And then when I take my sack off, I use my ice axe to pin it to the slope so so i either put it through a strap or through you know a loop or something yeah and if it's soft snow i'll shove it in like that if it's firmer like it is when we've got grass here i'll use it like you'd hang a peg wow yeah do you see that so so i've come in and i put the handbrake on and everything's good i'm not things aren't going to blow away or roll away or you know everything's good now i can go in my sack without dropping stuff do you, do you see that what i often do is i step off the ledge with one foot making sure that that's really good and solid and then uh, i put the other one on now how do you tell it's really easy to put these on the wrong feet this one does have it says left on it so that's a good <laughs> good hint but sometimes seeing that because it's got snow on it and stuff difficult so this uh, you can see there's a curve to it, so that's one thing. The other thing is the buckle always goes on the outside, so if you're not sure, just look at where the buckle is, yeah? Um, and, and, and then, um, so I've stepped off, I've put my crampon down, make sure it's nothing's twisted up, and that's going to be my left foot, so I'm going to have to swap me there, and then it would be good to have something to bang my foot with because as you can see here the snow all sticks to it and so I can if I can hit it with something uh, or I can bang it on the other foot I can bang it on a rock you know but I knock it on something and then look at this I put my toe in and keep pressure on it can you see I've got what I'm doing there pressure's in my toe and then I lift my foot and I've just cleaned out the groove at the back I lift my crampon up to my boot rather than putting my boot in the crampon. Do, do, do you see that? Because that way I can keep downward pressure on the front of my boot there, yeah? And then I bring this round here and through. And can you see it's going in one, well you probably can't see, but it's going in one colour and coming out the other. And then we just go through between the two, split them apart and back through like that and because we've done it oh and then when you do them up you do them as tight as you can and they're just a little bit tighter yeah and then well, if you do cut off the end which i do recommend you do i would just leave it so that you can just tuck it tuck it in there out the way if you can but but it wants to be at least as long as going to the front there the other thing that quite often people do is they don't realise this slides round in here. So putting that a little bit further forward makes it much easier to put on. If it's right round the back, hmm. it's really hard to put on. But this this will slide through the back piece so I can move that buckle where I want to put, put it. So now if we age, how many crampon points have I got in? Six. Less than half, haven't hmm. I? Yeah? So, so now what I'm going to try and do is plug them in like an electric plug, yeah, into a socket. Mm. So plug them into the ground, try and get as many points as you can into the, into the ground or into the snow. Okay. Or onto the rock for that matter. A lot of the time you'll actually get, can you see all four front points on? Like that, and that makes it a lot more stable. So that's going to be quite a big step up. So I'm going to use my ice axe. So when I place my axe, I haven't really done this. I'm going to use my shoulder to swing it. And, and the problem is that our elbow goes out and then it, it glances off. Do you see? And then I'm going to go right to go left. Yeah. 
and I can stand here. Can you see that Z shape? Yeah. That's how we keep our heels low. Is that Z shape? Because then I can bring my hips in, and then and then as I'm moving up, I'll probably will stick my bum out a little bit so I can see what's going on, and I'll just show you that they'll stay on Red nothing here. On you know. Point. So pro probably actually what I would do is use that as a foothold, but they will just stay on that. So I'll just go down to go up, yeah? yeah, and it stayed there perfectly, didn't it? Yeah, like smearing on a rock shoe. Amazing, the forces involved us are massive, you know. So they will stay, and then and now I'm standing up, and now I just want to show you something. First. So this you could do facing facing out, coming down. Um, but it's fine so but I just want to talk about facing in where if it was a bit steeper because uh, there's actually a bit of technique involved there as well so so when you're going going down you want to you'll see if you're going up the natural place to put your foot is probably about level with your chin or just below your knee can you see that so so when you're coming down you want to put it about the same distance yeah but what people do is they do they do this and they wreck everything and you can see all my crampons are boiling up everything's going pear shaped yeah so you actually want to go and make progress with every step can you see that so can you see you're curled all up yeah hips forward shoulders back even further shoulders back further that's it you didn't so what you did was she was standing like that, fairly wide apart, and to move this foot, she moved all the way over that foot, yeah? You know, and then moved that foot. So, but what you guys both did a little bit of was, do, do you see that? Because you didn't actually weight transfer. Hmm. So you need to move your weight across, and then you can move that foot wherever you want, whenever you want, yeah? Totally in control. But when you don't weight transfer, you 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 kind of a bit you know you left wobbling your foot around and it doesn't feel good yeah so weight transfer you know forward to back or side to side is is crucial isn't it to yeah. all climbing yeah just you don't think about that yeah. but actually if you just drop it in it drops it in and it brings everything yeah, in yeah and then makes it, it so yeah. much easier on the, yeah so when your legs are straight you like that yeah, yeah? and and when you yeah, when your legs are bent, you tend to come in great. Yeah, yeah. anything for you? Uh, I think it's just keeping small footsteps, small, um, small, footsteps. small movements, so you can stay in balance and, yeah. so and keep keep your weight in the right place. Same as rock. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Rather than big powerful moves. Yeah. What about you, Ray? For me, it was at Z position. Actually, it, was, it felt really exaggerated when I was doing it. That okay. I, far, far more than I am. Okay. Because I felt like I was in a bit of a Z until. Until you found until out. Until you actually put me in the zone. Straight, straight legs are sticking your bum out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I don't know what I must look like normally. Gosh. Yeah, so for me it was uh, uh, weight transfer and uh, standing upright and everything else will follow. So learn to trust the crampon, reduce the fear, and it'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right, so, um, shall we have a little go at how do you feel about kind of going up over here? Yeah. People are up, are up for that, yeah. Mm -hmm. This was it. So realistically, Sorry, you're, you're not going to be on the flat, are you? Because no. if they fall over on the flat, it won't matter. So, so this is more the angle is going to be more like this, so you can stay more stood up because it's all the, the ratio of the angle between you and them. Yeah. Um, but you're trying. You, so, you, so the angle between your leg and the rope, you're trying to make that as acute as possible. Yeah.
crazy. That's great. Awesome, what I did was just sit down here and take a brace stance again. On that. Yeah. So I have my foot against this. Yeah. And just sat down there. And uh, you know, with with a bit of edge friction there as well, you've got a you know good feel. Are you looking for you? You know, and then if anybody falls off, we're all good, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. And then flip that one over. It's just that swap, isn't it? It's that swap second. Yeah. That's it. And now you wait there, because you're now on belay, aren't you? Whilst yeah. I go off up here. Okay. And the idea being then I can't pull you off, can I? Happy if days. this was a steep, hard snow slope, I'd go whistling off down mm. there, wouldn't I, if I, if I came off. But I'm, we're none of us going anywhere now, are we? So, um, Turf wars. It's like overhanging, grabbing on grass. <laughs> Hey mate. Just wanted to get that there so I can get that foot up. Might be a bit beyond me, this. Hey! Hang on, let's just get this axe out. Okay. <sighs> 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 yeah, I'm trying to rest. Hard <laughs> oh, work, man. Oh yeah, so I found that quite difficult. Nice 
one, Lathan. Nice one, Lathan. Well, it's been superb uh, so far, great conditions for it. And we started off at the car park checking out crampons, and then uh, we did some easy moving and thinking about movement over ground, didn't we, Chris? And then yeah. we did gradually steeper ground to slightly overhanging and putting the axe away, good safe rope work. So, uh, this has just been a tiny percentage of what Chris has covered today. So hi highly recommended and Chris has got considerable alpine uh, skills that translates well into this scrambly British environment. Coming in, putting your handbrake back on, you know, taking your sack off, pinning it to the slope, you know, all that. Making yourself a ledge so that you're not just teetering around, you know, all that good stuff that we've been talking about. Um, and then doing it uphill is much easier. And I was make it so you can see it so pull on the tab there and pull on this here and then it should just come undone pull that pull that and they'll come off yeah you know, 30 30, 38 is perfect yeah 30, 38 is perfect most avalanches huge number of them occur on 38 degrees so so between 30 and 40 once it gets a bit steeper the snow tends to roll off if it's a bit flatter it generally hasn't got enough energy when it to, to take it away so so how do we guess how steep something is well if we've got two things the same length which we often Wow, an amazing day that was. I'm glad to see things have defrosted a little bit at the campsite now, but the mountains are still nice and icy. So a battery ran out on the hillside up there, but what Chris did with us on the way down was did a lot of work with descending techniques. We did some icy scree running, all good stuff. So I'm back out with him tomorrow on low visibility and contour masterclass. So join me for that one another day with mountain guide Chris Ensoth. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers.